on to the next um, next lectures modernize neurocritical care in a, a resource constrained environment for a re relevant topic uh, we have changed the speaker so it's going to be uh, madiha madiha hussein who delivered the talk so dr hussein Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. I'm Dr. Madiha Hussain from Jinnah Hospital, Lahore. I'm a final year resident um, doing um, speci um, speciality in neurosurgery under supervision of Professor Naveed Ashraf. Uh, Sir Isaac Newton said, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants. So modern neurocritical care has its own giants, and we have done the same. Although it is said that the physicians like to have fathers of medicine, uh, yet the neurocritical care has had an evolutionary history, and it has evolved in less than a century. Uh, although there have been many turning points in the history of um, critical care, the first neurosurgical ICU was developed in 1932. The spinal cord units came into existence in 1936 and 1944. Um, the crucial event was the use of electrically driven iron lung by the Danish team in 1950-53 polio epidemics. Uh, and it kept on evolving till 2005 uh, when it was recognized as a speciality and now it has progressed on to multimodal monitoring. Despite the phenomenal progress in the care of critically ill patients, there still exists certain level of difficulties and complexities. And uh, um, the turf war goes on between the various partner specialities and the the term neurocritical care uh, arouses hostilities even in countries which epitomize state-of-the-art treatment facilities and the turf war goes on between the partner specialities. Uh, if even in countries with uh, specialized um, advanced uh, service uh, uh, provision of service care, there exists um, part interspeciality clash, one can possibly imagine the void and the chaos for patients in developing countries. So superior care of the patient should be the main concern, leaving the politics to the backstage. Only then we can improve our uh, competencies and find out why the patient don't do well and how we can improve the outcome. Now coming towards the uh, different ICU models, we have three type of ICU models, um, the open, transitional and closed one. And studies have shown that the closed ICU model has reduced mortality and morbidity. And also certain multicenter cohort studies have shown that the SMPs have in, uh, improved the outcome. Uh, initially, we had faced huge void in the efficient service of uh, post-traumatic coma patient and post-operative care. 
And stuck in a warp zone where we are running a big neurosurgical unit by any standards, the neurology department is non-existent and the partner specialities have an evasive rather than obligatory attitude. So we had two options, either to give up and be a part of this system or to go against the odds. So we decided to choose the latter one. Thus, we took up the challenge and we present our close model of neurocritical care service driven by the neurosurgical neurointensivist. Uh, and corollary to this commitment is the traumatic brain injury patient centered uh, critical care with the capacity and capability to deal with most of the neurological illnesses. We at Jinnah Hospital Lahore are focused on traumatic brain injury and are flexibly and lightly linked to other specialities for the provision of state-of-the-art treatment facilities to our critically ill patients and also are striving to adopt modern man monitoring. As you all know that uh, neurocritical care has formalized as a specialty only relatively recently. So it's dedicated units are far and few, especially in developing countries and public sector hospital because it requires best of everything. Our agenda at Genome Hospital Lahore has been a continuous endeavor to modernize our neuromonitoring, uh, for which we have occasionally raised and frequently inched to the present point. <clears throat> My this presentation is with the um, objective to demonstrate the effectiveness of modernizing neurocritical care and also to demonstrate that once you do the leg work, you are going to grab the collar. Our data shows that progressively we have managed to decrease the mortality rate starting from 47% down to 33% over the course of five years with added modalities. And you can imagine that the figures for the mortalities, they just slide down, they never plummeted and are hovering there. So before discussing all the measures which we have taken over these years in order to decrease the mortality rate, let me give you another angle to look at which might add perspective to it. These are four different type of studies uh, from four different type of service delivery centers. Uh, the first two studies are from Kenya and Nigeria. The rest of the two studies are from um, Finland and Switzerland. In the first two studies, you can appreciate that the mortality rate is more than 50%, whereas the Finnish, in Finnish study, the mortality rate is nearly 31%. And in Swiss study, it is 26%. If you go closely and study the ICU care, you can see that the Kenyan and Nigerian ICUs are the open ICUs, whereas the the Swiss ICU is an acute neurosurgical neurointensive care. I'm going to leave it there for a while and come back to it afterwards. So as I was saying, progressively, we have managed to decrease the mortality rate in our neurocritical care unit. So in the upcoming slides, I will be discussing all the measures which we have taken and how they became consequential. The neurocritical care unit at Jinnah Hospital Lahore is a 16-bedded unit, which is further divided into eight-bedded intensive care unit and eight-bedded high dependency unit. And we are highly equipped with latest available equipments and is continually upgraded. Uh, the likely factors in any critical care which lead to the increased mortality are related to um, nursing care, monitoring, ventilation, infections like pulmonary wound infection, urinary tract infection, and brain infection. So in the upcoming slides, I will be discussing each of these factors individually and the measures which we have taken during these years. A large contribution to the patient care is made by nursing staff, be it medication, mobilization, chest physio, and prevention of bed sore. Initially, we had one nursing staff attending three patients. Progressively, we have increased this ratio to one nursing staff attending two patients, and the proof lies in the decreased incidence of bed sore. According to a study, the incidence of bed sore in a critical care unit is nearly 20 to 50%. So in order to address this issue, now all of our patients are provided with mechanical measures to prevent bed sores and are also nursed diligently. This has led to a steep decline in the incidence of bed sore from 35% down to 18% over the course of four years. And this has been achieved by focusing more on out of bed ventilation and uh, regular posture change. And definitely it is related to increase staff to patient ratio. The next important factor in any critical care unit is the sophistication of monitoring. Neuromonitoring is an important part of neurocritical care. So when we started off in 2015, uh, uh, there was just a regular monitoring like uh, vital monitorings and CVP monitoring. By the end of 2015, we had acquired two ABG machines uh, for on-spot results. 
And uh, by the early 2018, we had uh, established and introduced ICP monitoring as a regular part of our neuro monitoring for certain traumatic brain injury patients and other indicated patients. Uh, we have also acquired advanced ventilators and entitled PCO2 is now a routine part of our monitoring. And this multimodal monitoring is going to get a real boost by early 2020 by inception of the introduction of um, brain microdialysis. Ventilation forms the backbone of any uh, critical care unit. Initially, we used to manage the airways either by endotracheal intubation or at best tracheostomies. And we were completely dependent upon the anesthesia run central ICU um, and, uh, and their ancillary services. We had a patronizing attitude and they had a condescending behavior until we finally managed to achieve all ventilated beds, which put us into a new situation that is to learn the machine and to provide its maximum benefits to our patients. Now we have free reached a stage where every new resident of ours is being monitored by the senior resident for the operation of this machine. And also they are enhancing their core skills by attending certain workshops and training sessions. As we all know that one of the major killers in any ICU is infection. And uh, we uh, sh have our share of this menace too. When we started off in 2015, it was hopeless sort of a situation. There was no routine of regular cultures. Blood cultures, antiseptic and aseptic measures were minimal. And uh, <clears throat> so progressively we escalated our efforts to a point where now we have adopted every measure to prevent and treat infections. Um, the patient isolation has been very difficult to achieve and the local participants are quite aware of the culture of relatives barging into the otherwise forbidden areas without precaution. So uh, the education of uh, attendance of patient has been very helpful, although the major factor has been the inception and reduction of the biometric entry system. Uh, as discussed earlier that the major killer in any ICU is infection and chief amongst it is this pulmonary infection. WAP is one of the category of infections which we are facing in our ICU and it accounts for more than half of the antibiotics used. And therefore our pulmonary infection control has been through the identification of prevalent organism in our ICU, employing the pulmonary infection score, starting up with the targeted therapy and also introduction of bronchoscopy into our momentorium. And also we have the luxury of round the clock physiotherapist to chip in with his efforts. Another important roadblock in our ICU was the uh, known availability of invasive uh, measures of, for the chest patients. So I would say this was the major catalyst which um, uh, helped us for the quest to uh, develop our ICU services further. Now we have introduced bronchoscopy in our ICU, which is done as and when required. Bronchoscopy serves both diagnostic as well as therapeutic purposes. It is done in any hour of the day by one of our senior registrars or senior trainees. I'm going to show you a video just to give you a glimpse how bronchoscopy has been helpful and life-saving. This was one of our patients who was desaturating and probably this is the bronchoscopy which was done by our one of senior registrar and we entered the airways. You can appreciate the thick clot at the entry of the air passages. The bronchus, one bronchus was cleared whereas the other there was few secretions which were sucked up on, and the way back out, we also removed the clot So the impact of all these measures uh, have, has been the rational use of antibiotics. And this year we have also published a study which shows uh, that uh, the daily cost of ICU antibiotics in our ICU has been nearly $35 per day. SOP-based management is thus a way to standardize and introduce doctors and nursing staff to a standardized and reproducible set of rules. In this regard, we go from prevention, infection control, to investigations like radiology, to interventions like tracheostomy, bronchoscopy, controlled ventilation, and finally, to how to mean, wean off. We also believe in the capacity building of our staff and doctors. In this regard, we have been conducting certain uh, training sessions and workshops. 
And finally, why neurocritical care is important? And obviously, the obvious answer is for a better patient outcome. But the hard facts are neurocritical care is a neglected field. The reason being, it requires lots of effort, dedication, and selflessness. And mind you, it has no self-glorification. So in conclusion, despite all these challenges, we present our close model of neurocritical care unit services driven by neurosurgical department, Jinnah Hospital Lahore in a public sector hospital with regular upgradations. We extend our hand and support to you all to learn from our experience and hardships. And I assure you the same can be done elsewhere where this component is lacking. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Is there any questions? If there is no question, yeah, sure. It's really just a comp a comment and a compliment. I want to congratulate you and your whole team. This is extraordinary. Um, it's care of the whole patient, which is why we went into medicine and went into neurosurgery. I cannot imagine that there's any senior resident in North America who knows how to do a bronchoscopy. And uh, so hats off to you. I think you so uh, broadening what we are able to offer our patients and learning from that is what this is all about. So congratulations Thank to you. Thank you so much. Thank you.